Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Naresh Agarwal. Thank you, uh, Michael, Peter, and Sandy. Uh, I think what, uh, what Peter and Sandy presented uh, gives a nice segue to what I'm going to talk about, because what you both did was take a more higher level view, and I'm going to go deeper down into a more funnel shaped view into, into more personal experience. And I think that would uh, balance off the whole thing pretty well. So my name is Naresh Agarwal. I'm an associate professor and uh, director of the Information Science and Technology Concentration at Simmons University. I'm also the president-elect of ACIST, and that's my the email address here, a Twitter handle, and the websites listed here. So I'll be I'll be representing ACIST, but also uh, bringing in the perspective of uh, Simmons University and of the School of Library and, and Information Science primarily, and some of my own personal experience through this uh, pandemic and how we uh, coped through the, through it. So these were the talking points that we had so far that you've seen as a common theme in all our talks. Uh, so what are some IFI Federation members doing? How are we coping? And uh, what tools and innovative approaches are we using? And what we think the future of online education is after the pandemic? So talking about the perspective of uh, Simmons here, as uh, what are we doing and how, and how are we coping? Or at least what we did uh, last year, I think it's we are hopefully beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel uh, by this time. So on the university level, uh, so there, there were three things happening in Simmons, or three or four things. One was at the level of uh, Simmons University, one, of the one at the level of the four colleges, and then within the colleges of the various schools and divisions within each college. So at the level of Simmons University, again, there were task forces uh, set up and there were, there were teams looked at, at how to pivot. And, uh, and as, as we saw, had in the intro to this talk, uh, there were various levels of ex experiences that faculty had. Some faculty were strong advocates of online teaching and had had years of experience, and some faculty had uh, had vowed never to teach online. And and we had a mix mix of those uh, on campus. And again, at different units on campus, different colleges, again there were different levels of experience with online teaching as well. And we had certain programs that had partnered with TUU for online teaching over the past few years. And in Simmons School of Library and Information Science, we had our own uh, online program, which was not part of it, partnered with TUU, and that was with, uh, we had Simmons Online supporting us, and we had been doing a pretty strong job of that since around 2014 or so, and we had been able to offer our entire master's program uh, fully online as well over the past uh, few years. And uh, so we, we were pretty well prepared at, at SLIDS as compared to some of the other units on campus. So the, the school of uh, the center of excellence in teaching and some of the other, some of the other units uh, they formed uh, a, a rapid force and they worked with the provost and, and the other units on campus to uh, really help support uh, the, the different colleges in in trying to move towards this plan in in terms of how to cope with uh, with COVID. So at uh, at our school uh, in SLIS, I was part of the three person team that my director Sandra Erdelis set up. So Sandra. Uh, uh, Jeff Pomeranz and I, we were this three-person uh, Simmons List COVID-19 Preparedness Task Force uh, that was set up uh, very early in March, at, or towards the end of February or, or early, early on in March. And we started meeting uh, pretty regularly about once or twice a week and coming up with plans as to like think of, thinking of various scenarios as to how do we cope with this, uh, this whole thing. And what was interesting to me was that uh, when the time came for this talk, and yesterday I had a meeting, meeting with Sandra, and as we were thinking, as I was talking about uh, the points that I should cover, um, I looked at our meeting notes uh, of this preparedness task force. So in the next three or four slides, um, I've tried not to reduce the text, uh, the text too much and to, and to present our notes as it was uh, in terms of what we did uh, in terms of the task force in, uh, in March 2020. So this was some of our notes uh, from, from those meetings. One was like two types of support to college faculty. One is uh, Help as you go support, which comes from the provost, and it's uh, suitable for faculty members who already have experience with online teaching and just need help here and there. And we also talked about a rapid deployment force uh, and with getting student help and to assign these students to individual classes. So you need a rapid deployment force, and these are not teaching assistants. These are not, and we we decided that these would be the technical the, the technical support students, and they would not be helping with instructional design but with uh, technology. And this is again continuing with our meeting notes. So we talked about the type of training that these uh, students might require uh, and how quickly they can pick it up. And students will need to be familiar with, with instructor side of Moodle, 
and understand the advanced side of uh, Zoom and Panopto. So Panopto was again uh, an online recording platform that the university had uh, just adopted. And one more uh, thing to keep in mind in terms of the context was uh, in June, uh, in July uh, last year, we got a new president of the, in the university and we got a new, pro, new interim provost. And before that, uh, our deans and directors also had been relatively new on campus. So it was a, a, a leadership uh, in transition when all, when all of this happened. So the new president and provost again um, had to sort of step in before that time in terms of liaising with the outgoing administration and, and to see this, uh, the tra this transition and the, and, the, and the pivoting through on campus. So here uh, at SLIS, um, we talked about doing a current skill survey of faculty with these uh, the platforms and also students and uh, create channels for the rapid deployment force of students to communicate with each other. So using Google Hangouts and email lists and so on. And we also had action as items assigned with each of these as to who would be in charge of these. And we talked about uh, various scenarios and we, we did scenario planning. Uh, how would the scenario look like from a student's point of view, from a faculty point of view? And, and we also have a, a second unit, uh, a second presence of the School of Library and Information Science called SLIS West uh, from their point of view. And we talked about general communication and being in touch with faculty and students that we know what we're doing. and. Uh, so even if we don't have full, full information, it was like a plan was to make sure that we communicate whatever we know at, at different points in time and, and to decide who would send out what messages by whom. And so we wanted people uh, to be informed and we also didn't want to create panic. So we, we were very careful about trying to think of, uh, of what messaging goes out to, goes out to whom. And uh, one of the things which, uh, which our director did was uh, encourage all faculty to, again, reach out to our students uh, just to, Tell the students that we are there to support you, and also that if you and, and especially I think to be make make sure that we are compassionate. That if students need more time for assignments, we're there to support you because uh, the students were affected in different ways, uh, either directly and or indirectly through knowing some people who might have had COVID or some people who lost members. Like uh, last year, I personally lost uh, two family members: my father and my brother-in-law, and I also lost a former student. So faculty were affected as well and students were affected. So there were different ways in which uh, we decided that we would need to be there to support each other through this. And uh, this was again an action items list we listed as is from our meeting notes. I didn't want to uh, leave this out just to, just to give you a feel of what are the kind of things that we talked about. So we talked about having uh, creating a SLIS customized document and we need uh, our students to have a headset asking them not to panic and uh, what to do when your classes go online and to talk about a backup instructor to, again, if a faculty member was to fall sick and what kind of payment uh, would be required for that and how would that affect course evaluation and a need for beginning training in a given platform on Zoom, Moodle, Panopto and so on. And uh, for real-time support in Zoom classes and for Panopto. And one proposal was to, uh, was to have a rapid deployment uh, task force. So this would be a team of students who would be like, hired for this purpose and again to make sure that we secured funding for, to pay these students and to train them adequately and backup uh, backup peer support and we talked about uh, about the types of emotional support that faculty and students would require so for, for faculty to use the faculty email as a channel for that and for students to have facebook groups informal slack channels and within Moodle and course, Moodle course shells to just to create discussion forums uh, uh, where, where students would come come and then uh, talk about what, what they're experiencing so in terms of uh, tools and approaches, so before we go there, let me show you some examples of uh, some other sites that, that we had. So th this was one of the documents that we created. Uh, this was a uh, this was using this template from uh, the Indiana University site. They have a, Indiana University has a website, a very nice website called uh, Keep Teaching uh, at IU. The Keep Teaching at Indiana University. So these are what to do in terms of uh, uh, of, of uh, any kind of disaster uh, but to happen like what are the strategies that can be used what are the tools and resources uh, how to create and deliver content assignments and feedback so again in terms of uh, uh, of again um, some kind of a disaster scenarios so so using that their template we created uh, this document so if you cannot hold classes on template uh, here are some steps on what to consider when you're moving online and having a, a faculty how to guide and get details about uh, about closure here uh, or an event. Uh, so the information on the COVID page, checking with the school, 
and uh, creating realistic goals for continuing education, reviewing your course schedule to determine your priorities, reviewing your syllabus for points that must change. Again, so students might be thrown off changes, so they would appreciate whatever details you can provide them. Uh, picking tools and approaches familiar to, to you and your students. So again, not trying to really uh, go over, go to a whole new thing, but but trying to really, really survive and, and support each other, but by, by making only those kinds of changes with which were absolutely necessary and identifying uh, new expectations for students. So what Simmons did uh, as a university was that we had a spring break and we decided to have an extended spring break uh, for an additional week. And that was the, that one week was that was which was given at the point in time for people to transition. So most faculty who did not uh, who had not taught online, they they used uh, they, they converted their class to face to face uh, to synchronous uh, live synchronous classes. And those faculty who were already teaching online, uh, uh, they, they continued their class as is, but were more mindful of assignment deadlines um, and so on, because some of the context surrounding the way, the, the way class, students attended those classes, uh, that had changed. So creating a more detailed communication plan and uh, communicating with students, again, things to, to keep in mind, communicating early and often, setting expectations, managing your communications load, and distributing course materials and end readings, again, some tips on that and keeping things phone friendly and uh, in terms of delivering lectures uh, on how to use Panopto and all for that and running a lab activities, fostering communications and collecting assignments. So there were all these guidelines that we developed for it. And uh, this was another document that we created on uh, faculty resources and how to guide. So on Zoom on how to hold live synchronous classes online, for Panopto how to record and share lectures. Uh, and these were other how to guides for how to embed uh, videos and Moodle and different guides for our students. So some of these we already had. It was, uh, it was a matter of putting it together and making sure that faculty had uh, access to it the, when they needed them. So uh, this was uh, uh, my Panopto folder. So I, I created a, a number of videos to help faculty the transition. So one was on how to record your lecture videos uh, using Panopto. And you can see that uh, no, my video came to the bottom part. My sliding, you can uh, viewer, and then you can use yep. top that part here. And so, so this was one of them. And uh, so I had to use Camtasia to to use to, to create this video for Panopto because Panopto was being demonstrated, so that it could not be used at that moment. Then this was about simple things like uh, how to change your video background on Zoom um, and so on. So. Again, uh, just to try to help uh, make learning online teaching more fun in, for in faculty. In Gangtok in Sikkim in India, now I could choose uh, a video and go back to me being muted right after that. So these were some of the videos that were created during this period. And then uh, uh, Jeff Pomeranz created this Google Sites uh, with uh, resources which were like specific to Simmons, which was on a faculty preparedness night guide, faculty resources and how to guide Simmons Moodle Basics. Uh, a Q&A site, how to teach at Simmons uh, during COVID-19, uh, the videos that we created, and a Simmons-wide faculty COVID-19 resource page, and, and internal documents on uh, moving online, and uh, an online transition page that Simmons had created in, in the view of uh, moving to a virtual form of teaching. And then again, support from the Center for Excellence in Teaching, and drop-in hours, and one-on-one -on -one consultations uh, that we had. So these were, were some of the uh, the documents that were created there, and going going into uh, the tools and approaches. So, again, uh, I had been this was some of my personal experience in teaching online. So until 2014, I used to be a skeptic of online teaching, and then I did a, an online teaching training and moved uh, during that period within a span of two months. I think from a skeptic uh, to an advocate of online teaching, and I've been I've, and I've been teaching online quite a bit uh, since then. So th these are some of the tools and approaches in online teaching in terms of uh, a backwards design process and course design uh, and the syllabus design, uh, Moodle and uh, Panopto and Zoom and philosophy and, and strategies. So here again, I just wanted to give uh, a brief demo of uh, the Moodle site uh, that we have in terms of uh, online teaching. So this was one of the courses on web development and information architecture. So this is a, a course homepage with uh, instructor information and announcements and forums here. The start of the week, end of the week, uh, and tips on learning online, collaborating using Google Drive for students. And within a particular week, again, um, an intro, intro video for the week, uh, and then uh, 
the objectives and, uh, and learning outcomes for each week, due dates uh, for the week, uh, readings for, for the week, and then uh, PDFs uh, uh, and assignments, forums, and then lecture videos uh, for specific parts uh, for, each, for each week there. And then uh, there are parts about discussions and labs uh, for that week. So that's just a brief example of uh, an online class. So going into the the future part now. So so what's the future of online education uh, post pandemic? And and here, uh, 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 Sandy's uh, shared quite quite a bit of uh, of this future based on her talk with uh, with Alice leaders, and uh, from what I what I've seen and heard so far, and and in, in my conversations with people. Um, a lot of skeptics now, and I'm also um, a member of the, of the Faculty Senate uh, at Simmons University. So initially, there were a lot of faculty members from across different colleges uh, on campus who were, uh, who were quite against online teaching. And, and now I think uh, that there is a huge change that, that I find in, in, in terms of faculty being much more open um, to online teaching. Of course, there are, there are lots of various issues because uh, uh, people see the shift from uh, the blurring of boundaries between the personal lives and professional lives, there's Zoom fatigue, uh, there is a whole lot of uh, those other issues. But people also see that see the amount of comfort uh, that online teaching provides as opposed to uh, a face to face teaching. So, so there is a lot of uh, skeptics turned advocates like myself uh, that I find now. But but there could also be the other end of it that pretty people who are advocates of online teaching, teaching uh, previously would now would now turn skeptics because there is uh, just too much of online teaching going on. Almost everyone is online, uh, and and that earlier scenario of priding yourself to be good at Zoom is is something so common now that you long to go back to the face to face uh, environment and, and to the classroom environment. So, so the world as we as we know is not going to be the same same again. Uh, but but I think uh, it, so. We we will not be going back, but we will definitely going to be going to be going back to something better than what we have right now. So these are just uh, my uh, contact information over here, and I think we should all be ready to, to take questions now. Thank you.